Hey everyone, welcome back. Our next guest is highlighting Black Indigenous people of color. Through what? Through her online platform, gallerygirls.net. And now, through her new book, We Are Here, Visionaries of Color, Transforming the Art World. The book celebrates and showcases 50 creatives in the art world, from artists to curators to museum, museum educators, excuse me. And joining us to tell us more about the book, we welcome author Jasmine Hernandez. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much. So excited to, to be here. This is my TV show debut. I am honored to be asked by BronxNet to talk about my book and my work and the website. And I'm absolutely thrilled. Thank you for, the, for sharing space with me. I'm absolutely thrilled. Bravo, bravo. We love, we love when, 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 when we pop the cherries. <laughs> I just used that term a few days ago. Love it, love it. I made my clubhouse debut. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, honestly, Jasmine, um, you are a force to be reckoned with. Everything that I have read on your story is nothing short of impressive. And I would like to introduce you to our viewers first by explaining to them what drove you to even creating this book, which, um, you know, we're going to basically give you a little bit of insight as to who's in the book. It's a, a, a coffee table book, but uh, I'm most fascinated by the fact that you don't come from a traditional curating background. And so can you explain that to our viewers, what that means? Oh, absolutely. I'm a native New Yorker. I graduated from Parsons, so I do have like an art school foundation, but I worked in fashion and media, but I was always drawn to the contemporary art world. I was, you know, an artsy girl that grew up in Jamaica, Queens with my Afro-Dominican single mom and my younger brother. And I always, um, you know, devoured art and culture through magazines, um, through MTV, VH1, mm -hmm. etc. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to Parsons. I graduated. I worked in fashion, but I was always in art spaces. I was always going to museums and galleries. I was going to galleries, you know, um, on Thursday nights in Chelsea when they have big openings, or I was going to museums on the free day, or I would just, you know, pay a penny to go to the Met. And um, I, I absolutely loved art, but I never saw myself represented. I studied dead white men in school. And when I graduated and I was out in the real world, it was still cis white men being celebrated, the Damien Hurst and the Jeff Koons. And um, there was a shift happening in early 2010, like in the 20-teens, like 2011, 2012, where you just had superstars like Kehinde Wiley and Micheline Thomas and Carol Walker. And that world was so thrilling. So with the website, um, which I co-founded with someone else, but she bowed out eventually and I continued shaping it. The focus was on black artists, black and brown artists and on women. Um, and, and I just put one foot in front of the other. So I would go around the city and see exhibits and, and just write very frankly and very openly about these artists. I was also meeting art workers. So it got to a point where I was like, well, wait a minute, there are also these young curators of color who are cultural producers and gallerists and curators, it's not just the artists, it's the art workers as well. And we're all the same age and we're meeting through social media and it's like this beautiful community that's being formed digitally, or organically first digitally and then offline. And they need to be celebrated as well. So the website continued doing um, exhibition reviews on artists of color, but also documenting these cultural workers, cultural producers shaping art in New York City as well and beyond. And, and the, the, the whole thing uh, uh, with regards to, uh, it, it's an experience, okay? So I had the uh, privilege of just skimming through it uh, and it's definitely a visual book, uh, but it also provides uh, background on each individual. And I also want to mention that the foreword is written by Swiss Beats. Yes, yes, <laughs> which, yes, very you know, exciting. That's a nice name to have attached yes, to the project. Yes, Bronx Native. Most importantly, what um, I, I'm hoping for our viewers to walk away with is what drove you to do this, right? Which is obviously you just shared that you uh, attended Parsons and you, you, you read a lot of history on uh, like dead white men and, and then you went and experienced, you know, what white men are. And, and, and so this is not about being racist. It's, this is about disrupting the systemic yes. racism yes. because yes. Um, basically somewhere in there, it was told that um, that's what people need to learn in order to feel accomplished right and so what she's done is she's now made it her business to create the history for us 
And, and, and I'm sharing this in this manner because I, I want everybody to understand um, that it's so important uh, for us to really value the art that is being created by our own people, which means like there's the artist creating and then there's the, you know, the spectators and, and or the consumers. And so, you know, it, it, it's a full circle type of situation in which we're able to raise our associate economic situation and and create a value uh, upgrade our value um, because you know we're all dealing with uh, colonialism and oppression and and you know we can stay in those conversations and we can shift the paradigm and have right. these conversations which is what we're doing now anyway that that was my take on it I'm in awe over what you've created Thank you so much. Thank you. Your support is monumental. I'm so thrilled. A lot of the subjects in the book, they are my friends. It's a wide swath of folks in the book. It's 50 individuals. It's intergenerational. So you have veteran artists like Lola Flash and Renee Cox, who are iconic Black women artists. Then you have younger artists. You know, you have like zillennial artists like a Katie Pevenito, who's a non-binary um, artist that 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 deals with um, their autobiography and their history of their of their um, maternal grandmother. And uh, it's very personal work. And then you have someone like Uzo Maki Cepeda, who is a 25-year-old Dominican-American artist from the Bronx who you know, lives in, in, in LA and creates um, safe spaces, the, these installations that, that, that she uses faux fur. And they're, they're, they are like these metaphorical safe spaces. But overall, the, the, the people in the book were shifting the culture. You know, They were appearing on magazine covers. They were getting magazine profiles in Vogue. And that's lovely and amazing and we need that. But I wanted to go beyond magazine articles and magazine covers. I wanted to go beyond like 10 black artists to follow on Instagram or 10 Latinx artists to follow on Instagram. Like we need, they need to be canonized. And my book isn't the only book. There are other books, you know, where my, we are here is in dialogue with those books as well. But this, this, zeitgeist, this zeitgeist in this moment is very powerful. And I didn't want us to forget it because we forget so quickly. It needed to be documented. And it should and it and it should come from a black person, from a black Latinx Afro Dominican identified person as myself, who is um, you know celebrating and documenting these folks. Um, I'm not a white art writer who's who, you know who's privileged and given this opportunity, and I'm throwing in some random minorities. Like this is for us, by us, by you know by a, you know BIC BIWOC for celebrating black and brown folks. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love everything about what you just shared because I'm thrilled. This, I'm so this, thrilled. this is the movement, sweetheart. Yes. And, and, you know, it's Women's History Month. What better time to yes. share it with our, our viewers? And, yeah. um, and, and again, I, everything you just shared is really uh, the takeaway, right? It, it's this beautiful artwork, but in addition to the beautiful artwork, it's made at, for and by people of yes. color. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's key. And this, you know, this book came out in 2021. You know, I don't think of this book as a book for 2021 consumption. Like we should look at this book in 2040 and 2050. We always look back. We've been looking back at the nineties for so long. We will look back at the 2020s. And, and this book is a testament that we existed and we are here. We are still here. We will still be here in 2040. You know, so it was key to document and celebrate everyone. That was monumental. Well, um, congratulations, Jasmine. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. and you know, just just uh, a little words to to for you to ponder and um, trust that the book itself is going to hold historical value because of the time that it was published. Right. For hundreds of years to come. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Believe it. And, um, and we're happy to share it with our viewers. And um, I, I know, Jasmine, it, it's actually available on various platforms, the book that is. But Jasmine Hernandez is also uh, an advocate for uh, supporting our local businesses. So um, if you're interested in obtaining the book, We Are Here, Visionaries of Color, Transforming the Art World, it's available at Bronx's own Lip Bar, and it's also available at Café Con Libros in Crown Heights, and it's also available at various locations throughout New York City. But if you want to know one that's near you, you can go to Gallery Girls, that's spelled with a U, Gallery Girls with a U, dot net. All right, so we do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to find out all about a new solo art exhibition. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 